Question for you. Uh, we've sent, you know, huge amounts of kit. We've sent artillery shells. We've sent anti-tank missiles, about 10,000 of them. We've sent military vehicles. We've promised to send a few tanks. I mean, the British Army hasn't got many tanks these days. Uh, Boris Johnson seems to think we should send the entirety of the Royal Air Force. And we now, in Europe, have a shell crisis. I think for the first time since 1915. Can we afford, Major General, to go on giving this level of support in military kit? Well, we can afford to go on doing it, and, and we need to go on doing it. The issue is, how do we backfill um, all of the stuff that we are providing to Ukraine? One of the issues over the last few years is that we have fought wars of choice, and we have uh, denuded ourselves of the logistics that support war fighting, major war fighting operations. Um, and for me, the critical mass of the army, for example, is the ability to put a sustainable uh, divisional sized formation into a war fighting scenario and, and be able to support that for at least, let's say, six months. That requires a lot of stuff. As somebody once said, without supplies, no army is brave. Now, we've been giving lots of supplies to Ukraine, and I don't have a problem with that. But the bottom line is we are reducing the level of our own stocks of logistics and other things too. Yes. So we've got to put ourselves onto a bit of a war footing. We've got to up the production lines. We've got to start replacing that, partly because, I mean, there is an argument to say that what we're fighting or what we're seeing here is a proxy war that Ukraine are going to do all the fighting and we simply need to provide all the stuff and that uh, we are not going to end up by having to fight this war ourselves. That's a dangerous assumption. I I'm not saying that we're going to be putting troops into Ukraine anytime soon, but I agree with the previous speaker, Martin, that uh, this is going to be a long, drawn-out affair, and we have no way of knowing how this thing is going to go. Putin is not going to walk away from it. President Zelensky, who obviously we've all got a huge amount of respect for, obviously also talks up what needs to happen. You know, he's not going to give up his territory and so on. The idea that Ukraine is going to retake all of their territory, including the Crimea, as you were just saying, I just think is not going to happen. Putin is not going to walk away from this. Well, no, nor do I. Lose. Say again? No, nor do I. I agree with you. I think the idea of retaking uh, Crimea is wholly unrealistic, and yet it's very much the stated view of President Zelensky. Um, so a thought from you. Do we know what we're coalescing around? No. No, is the short answer, other than we're coalescing around the fact that we don't want Russia, in inverted commas, to succeed. Now, what do, we, what do we mean by success? What do we mean by winning and losing and so forth are part of this broader debate. Um, but we are, we are rightly coalescing around the idea that we cannot allow Russia to take the Uc whole of Ukraine and indeed then take other things too. I mean, Moldova has been in the news quite a bit recently and other things too. Yep. What does that look like is a, is a big issue. And I, there's not been that much debate, actually, wide debate in the media and elsewhere about what, what we mean by that. I mean, President Biden says we're in for the long haul. And I'd, I'm not suggesting that he's in any sense being disingenuous, but you have to say we weren't in it for the long haul in Afghanistan. We weren't in it for the long haul in Iraq. What does he mean by long haul? Um, you know, we, wow. we have got to be clear <laughs> that we are not going to, we're not going to start World War Three to go back one of your headlines, over four provinces of Ukraine. I mean, let's be honest about this. Well, let's hope you're right. And yet, you know, President Zelensky, and you said earlier, in this little conversation that we admire him for his courage, his bravery, his leadership, his, his and indeed a very articulate man. Yeah. Uh, and yet, for him to say to a German media outlet that if China starts to support Russia, it's World War Three, wasn't that highly irresponsible? Well, I, I don't agree with him, but I don't, in a way, I don't blame him for saying it. He has, you know, remember, we're talking about politics here as much as practical military reality. He has got to maintain a public profile that says to the West as a whole, you have got to stick with us on this. And if China comes in on Russia's side, it is obviously going to make things more difficult. I mean, actually, China in itself is a longer term strategic threat. Somebody once said that Russia is like bad weather. China is like global climate change. And I think there's truth in that. South China Sea, what they're doing in Africa and elsewhere. And China and Russia, of course, have got this sort of agreement that there is no limits to their friendship. Now, I don't think that means China is going to send people, but will they send material support? Quite possibly. Well, will it lead to World War III? No, I don't think so. 
But I don't blame President Zelensky for wanting to ensure that the West as a whole does stay with him on this, does give him the ability to continue the fight, both in terms of defensive operations, which is what we've effectively seen over the last year, and to be enable him to conduct some sort of offensive operation this coming spring, you know, into the summer or whatever. Well, Tim Cross, thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for joining me. And like you, I'm actually more worried long term about China than I am about President Putin. Thank